hello and welcome to the ninth video in this tutorial programming series on C. In this video we're going to take our first look at variable type of arrays. We've made a file here called ch9.c. It's the standard main function, the library header standard in out, and I've declared three integers, value of 10, 20 and 30, printing them to the screen. I'm declaring another integer called multip and multiplying n1 and n2 together, 10 times 20, and printing the result should be 200 to the screen. I'll just compile it here on the right hand side and run it, and there you can see we've got the result printed to the screen. I'll just add an extra new line onto there. Okay, so what is an array? Well, an array is simply a container. So where here we specified three integers separately by separate names, we could also declare a container to hold three integers. So Let's call this int holder, or better, let's call it int array, because we're talking about arrays. And then after the name, you simply put some square brackets, and inside the square brackets, the number that you want to store. In our case, we want to store three integers in our array. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually specify what the values are inside this array. So we've got three integers, if you imagine three boxes, each box can hold an integer side by side and we want to put a value in each side of those boxes. And there are a number of ways we can do that. The first way is using a code block like this. We could specify 10, 20 and 30. And this would say the first integer has a value of 10, the second integer has a value of 20 and the third integer has a value of 30 inside this array. We can also specify the values in the array by specifying which position we want to set the value at. So rather than doing it like this, for example, if you had an array of 5,000 numbers, it would be a bit laborious to type out 5,000 numbers here by hand. You might want to loop through them and access them by position. And the way we do that is to take the variable name put some square brackets and this time tell it what position we actually want to access. So if we want to access the first position or the first box in the container, so we would actually use the index position of zero because everything in C is zero indexed, which means the 10 here is the integer at position zero, the 20 is the integer at position one, the 30 is the integer at position two and so on. The array itself has a size of 3, but the indexing is done by 0 indexing, so it starts from the index 0. So I could set here that the index 0 is 40, 50, 60, at 2, and at 3. So if I just take this now to be a little bit quicker, and if I decide to print the integer array value at index 0, and we'll do 1 and 2, and we'll do 2 and 1, and do exactly the same thing after here. So, again, I've declared the array here. I've declared space for three integers here inside the square brackets and I've set the three integers with the value of 10, 20 and 30. So the first box with 10, the second box with 20, third box in the container with 30. And now I want to print those values. And just as in the printf statement here, I've got the name of the variable, the format specifier saying I want to print an integer, and then after the speech marks and the comma, define which integer that is. With an array, use the variable name of the array and you have to then inside square brackets say the position of the variable that you're accessing and it always starts from the position 0 so in this case the 10 is at position 0 the 20 at position 1 and the 30 at position 2 and you can also equally set the positions that the values of the in this case integers in the array by specifying, just as you do up here with the variables, you set the values. You can set the values also by using 
the variable name into array and the index position where the value wants to be set again using a zero based index. So just to show the output from this program if I now do ch9 and you can see our arrays three values are 10, 20 and 30 and then 40, 50 and 60. So it's fairly simple stuff. It's not very hard, I don't think, to understand. The only trick really is that the index is zero based, not one based. So it's not positions, well it is position one, two and three, but the index of these positions is zero, one and two. And that's really the only important thing here to remember. The one more important thing to remember before I end this video is that unlike Java and C Sharp, or any sort of runtime based language, they they control and check and make sure that you're accessing variables that you've declared in space that you've declared here we've said that we have declared space for three integers and when using our indexing we're accessing positions not one and two so the three different positions available to us but what would happen say if i decide to print here an access position i don't know 12. now this program will compile because the compiler, I'm not going to run it yet, the compiler is not going to check whether we're overrunning the end of our array. As a C programmer, that's our responsibility and we can do whatever we like with it. The, program, the compiler simply lets the program allocate space for three integers for us in sequence. And if we decide to access the 16th, oh sorry, 16th, in this case the 13th, so at position 12, the 13th integer, that'll be accessing memory that's belonging to something else in our program. It will retrieve an integer value from that sometimes. Sometimes it might crash and in really, really bad cases it might actually cause a blue screen on Windows. Linux and Mac will warn you and not actually completely crash and freeze. Windows might. But it'll give us back maybe a value instead of crashing. So if I just run this program now, you can see here it's given us back the value of 0. If I change this now to say 24, save Compile and run. It's now given us an enormous value of a well, well, a 1.9 billion essentially, 1.97 billion. But the take-home is it's given us a completely nonsensical value, which is of no use to us whatsoever. Because one source, especially when you start programming, of big bugs and bad bugs in your program, is when you're doing, say, program uh, calculations involving values in large arrays and you don't realize in your loop, if you're say looping through the array to add up all the values or something like this, that you've actually gone past the end of your array. Now you would hope there the program would say, hey I've gone past the end of the array or I'm not going to compile this, but it does compile and it could then be using a value that means, well would then be using a value that has absolutely no sense or doesn't belong at all inside your calculation and your program will then give wrong, wrong answers and will have bugs inside it. And like I said, that's the best case. The worst case is the program crashes or you get a blue screen of death or something like this. So two things that are important with arrays are one, they're zero indexed and two, you're responsible for defining your size and accessing indexes that belong to the size or the area that's been allocated for you when you've programmed your program. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video we'll go into a little bit more detail with arrays and some loops and getting some user input and look a bit more how they're used. Thanks very much for paying attention. I hope it made a little bit of sense because to be honest this was about the sixth attempt that I've had at this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.